One of the interesting features of the development of medicine in the last several decades has been the emergence of what's referred to as the biopsychosocial model of health and illness. So it's increasingly widely accepted that one needs to understand not only the biological roots of disease, but also its psychological impact, how psychological factors indeed do contribute to disease and illness, as well as the social factors that relate to it. So there are myriad social factors associated with any illness, uh, including prevention. Uh, if we construct social environments, we can protect people from exposure to disease and illness. Social factors that relate to the consequences of illness that entrap people in lives as, uh, as, as invalids. And social factors that relate to the delivery of health care, whether we're talking about uh, governmental systems for the delivery of health care, institutional policies in hospitals and clinics that ensure people will get, uh, have access to immediate care, or even the provision of healthcare professionals can help people out. Now, that biopsychosocial model has organized a lot of my thinking about psychosocial factors in uh, pain and pain-related disability. There's a huge amount of energy in understanding biological factors that relate to pain. But an explosion of research over the last several decades. We indeed do understand a great deal more about the involvement of the central nervous system in uh, interpreting input as painful experience and how the various diseases and injuries can contribute to the experience of pain. And there have been some interesting innovations in delivery of drugs that help us to control pain, although we uh, uh, continue to use the old standbys of uh, drugs that are related to aspirin to knock down pain and drugs that are related to the opioids, morphine and the like. Those are very much the stand standbys in pharmaceutical control of uh, pain. But uh, psychological factors are also important determinants. If people are too locked into the biomedical model of pain, it's easy for them to ignore the psychological factors that contribute to pain, people's thoughts, feelings, and somatosensory experience. And the social dimensions, well, they've uh, in many ways been ignored. They're not recognized as, as important as they really are. If we had a better health system that paid more attention to chronic pain, if we had more healthcare practitioners trained in understanding the biopsychosocial model of pain, we would be better off. If we um, gave practitioners specific skills, uh, mostly I think in terms of such psychological interventions as cognitive behavioral therapy and stress management techniques. If healthcare practitioners had skills in delivering these interventions to patients, patients would be far better off.